Thank you. All right. So we're just uh, just waiting on um, making sure that Deacon Dan's audio is working okay. Hi, Barry. Good morning, hey, Deacon. Hey, Dan's here. there he is. Hey, Deacon. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. It's morning, morning for me. I think it's in the afternoon for all you good folks. That just, <laughs> that just happened like a minute ago, Deacon. So we're, we're good. Okay. Good morning will work for us. All right. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. Uh, this is being recorded. This this meeting of ours uh, is being recorded. So uh, for those that couldn't make it or somebody comes on later, if you missed part of it or something like that, it'll be available. Uh, Eric will be available later on YouTube or where, where that's where the recording will be. Okay. So, yes, it'll be available on our YouTube channel. And if anyone um, is having trouble with Zoom, it's live on our YouTube channel right now. Okay, fantastic. So I would like to ask uh, Deacon Dan Rivetto if he'd be kind enough to open us our, open up our fourth uh, membership meeting in prayer. Sure, Barry. It'd be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. On this day, um, January 22nd, Holy Mother Church celebrates the life of St. Vincent, who was a deacon and martyr. Also on this day, the church has set aside this day as a special day of prayer for the legal protection of the unborn. So let us remember them in our prayer throughout the day. And we'll begin our opening prayer with the sign of the cross as our Blessed Mother showed Bernadette in the grotto. We begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day with grateful hearts. We thank you. We thank you for the gift of Our Lady of Lords Hospitality, North American Lord Volunteers. We thank you for all of its members, and for the wonderful service they provide, service that's inspired by Our Lady and St. Bernadette. And we ask, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit to be with us during our meeting today, and that all that we do, Lord, is in accordance with your will. And to help us, we ask for the intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, pray, pray for, for us. us. Saint Bernadette, pray, pray for, for us. us. Saint Vincent, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon. You are such a blessing to us. Thank you, my friend. We appreciate that. Beautiful prayer. So again, we'd like to, uh, to welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Uh, you are members. Uh, you're really the foundation of everything we do here at Lourdes Volunteers. And um, this meeting is our fourth, our fourth meeting where we've gotten together like this. Uh, we like to think about it as uh, we're all together at our virtual kitchen tables. It's an informal meeting. Um, those of you that uh, haven't used Zoom that much before, don't have to worry about us seeing you. All you can really see are the panelists uh, that are on your screen. Everybody sees the same thing uh, that you're seeing. And so in this meeting today, we'd really like to kind of take you through the blessings that we collectively as an apostolate and a ministry uh, we're blessed to receive in 2021, and also to give you an overview of the plans for 2022. Um, and that's uh, what we plan on doing here today. So uh, without further ado, um, you know, we thought about how, would, how should we start this meeting? And it's always good to start in the beginning. And in this case, we're starting in the very, very beginning of Lourdes Volunteers. And there's a story about Lourdes Volunteers founding that I think some of us have heard little bits and pieces of, uh, but we have the person that was centrally involved in this with us here today, and that would be Teresa Steiner. So, uh, Teresa, uh, if you're out there somewhere, there she is. Okay. Hi, Teresa. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. So, um, Teresa uh, 
we've all heard the story of this business card that got plucked out of a fishbowl or something. And that was sort of how Marlene Watkins and Teresa Steiner ended up traveling to Europe. But Teresa, you were the one that was involved in that. It was your fish, it was your uh, business card, right? That got pulled out of the fishbowl? Yes. And when I think about it, it's, it, it's amazing how this happened was I, I was at the time working in a, um, at a major 500 company and very diligent. Um, my mentor and close friend, Rick, invited me to lunch. Ah, uh, no, I don't want to go to lunch. You know, I have work to do. And I'm just going to grab something from the lunch cart. And he said, no, no, United Airlines is giving away free tickets to Europe. We got to bring your, your business card. All right. You can see how enthused I was. <laughs> so, all right. We went to the cafeteria. He put in his card and I put it in and looked at him. It's like, are you happy? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, no clue. We got back from lunch. He went to his meeting and I get a phone call. I won the tickets. Please come down for a photo. And I'm looking for Rick. And of course, you know, he, he's at a meeting. Don't worry, phone. So after we did the photo, the first person I called, of course, was Marlene. And I said, okay, I want tickets. Where are we going? And I thought for sure she'd say France. Mm -mm. She wanted to go to Rome and see the Pope. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so what followed after that um, is we, you know, much, much, much planning. And we ended up taking a three-week pilgrimage all over Europe. We flew into Paris, um, rented a car, drove to all of the, you know, Catholic sites that you would think of. As a matter of fact, um, her husband called it the dead body tour because they were all incorruptibles. <laughs> and God bless, um, God bless Bill. <laughs> yes. Uh, then we drove to Lisbon, picked up a tour company, a Catholic tour company. Um, and, um, then we went with them through, you know, from Portugal to Spain, back to France. Um, so, how, what about Lourdes? so Lourdes was just one of the many stops that you yeah. guys made. As a matter of fact, we, we, we drove to Nevers. She, we actually were in Nevers before we are, were ever in Lourdes. You know, I, I may be mistaken. I think we've got a picture of when you guys were in Nevers. Let's, let's take a look. There we go. Yep. So that's yep. you on that trip. And for those of the, we have some new members, so people might not know. Some people, I think most people certainly do know who Marlene Watkins is. But for those of you that don't, uh, Marlene Watkins, that's the person you see on the left in this picture on the top, is our foundress. And it was her and Teresa that were on that trip. And out of that trip and out of that business card in the fishbowl, those were the origins of Lord's Volunteers. Absolutely. So this was in the Ver, Teresa. This was in Nevers. The woman in the middle, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, but she's a sister of Nevers. And she's really the one who introduced, introduced us to Bernadette. Wow. And she's been very, had been, has been very good to us uh, over the years as we started to bring um, people to Lourdes. Um, and what happened in Lourdes, though? I mean, after you're touring all these places and you're seeing all of these you know, wonderful sites and holy places. What happened in Lourdes that, you know, resulted in Lourdes volunteers? Oh, well, it wasn't just Lourdes, but in Lourdes, of course, we went, we had, we went into the baths and um, it literally, you know, changed both of us, but especially Marlene. Um, she came out and that's where the term liquid grace came from. She came out of the, 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 um, the baths, just really anything that, you know, she had been struggling with over the years really felt healed. And she experienced personally for herself, the healing of Lourdes. Um, and then it was after that, she wanted to share that healing. She would, you know, the following year, um, you know, she had her, her sister and a close friend of ours that was very much in healing. So where else to bring her, but to Lord. So that's, that's really what started that, that's, 
that and then the second pilgrimage and then it just snowballed from there isn't that amazing it's it's awesome god is so awesome so marlene experienced this special healing um in the baths this special grace this liquid grace mm -hmm. and you know what ended up forming is this wonderful apostolate in this ministry that we're all part of so we, we would like to say thank you to you and to Marlene uh, for having the open hearts uh, and, and taking this trip and doing everything you did to make this ministry possible. And of course, the Holy Spirit, our Lord is involved deeply in this and Our Lady very, very deeply involved in this. And so um, there's a few things we'd like to hear from Marlene. Uh, this is a recording, but um, it's he talks about our mission and our charism, because just like a person has a personality, we each have personalities, um, a, an organization, especially an association of the, of the Christian faithful, which we are, uh, a Catholic Association of the Christian Faithful, has a charism. And that's like, it's similar to a person having a personality. So this is sort of like our, our personality. And we also have this mission. So let's hear from Marlene about our charism our mission and our charism. And then following that, Teresa, I know that a part of the association and part of the pilgrimage is um, we, we have a membership oath, right? That's part of, part of this association. And then, so after we hear from Marlene about our mission and charism, uh, we're gonna go ahead and ask you to lead us in renewing our membership oath, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear from Marlene. So our mission is to extend the invitation um, of the Immaculate Conception as it was given to Bernadette in the grotto at Lourdes to serve the sick and the suffering at Lourdes and at home, following the loving example of St. Bernadette in simplicity, humility, and obedience. And that really encompasses all we do, which is um, to bring the very sick to Lourdes when it's possible, and also for us to serve the very sick in Lourdes when that's also possible. And then, of course, always serving the sick at home in that same charism, in that same spirit. Our charism, so um, people have a personality and associations in the church, that's where the bishop breathes the life into a public association, which is what Lord's Volunteers is in the Catholic Church. Um, a charism is like what a personality is to a person, a charism is to an association. And our charism, the very center, the heart of it, the core of our charism is love and everything we do radiates out from that in love. Our charism is best expressed as family um, in the spirit of joy. So that's how you can usually tell someone else that's um, a member of the association and our charism, you'll see those aspects, like the facets of a jewel, um, those things will be um, visible and radiating and reflected in what we do. We love each person as Jesus Christ. We're caring for each person um, as we would care for Jesus in his wheelchair, as the Blessed Mother herself would care for Jesus Christ in his wheelchair. And if we run into any questions or anything that we have to ask, Love is always the answer to every question we have. And if we run into any difficulties or challenges, um, we can always find the answer in the Gospels. Uh, we find the solution and the difficulty is right there before us. We hear it at Mass in the Gospels and on Sunday and how we live it every day at Lord's Volunteers, wherever we are. Um, we're called as members to live this message of Lord's of prayer and of penance, to pray for sinners, for those away from God. And we're to do that with the graciousness of the Mother of God, the Immaculate Conception of the Grotto, and the humility and the simplicity of Bernadette at Lourdes and at home. Okay, and Teresa, if you'd be kind enough, we, we thank you, Marlene. And we, uh, and Teresa, if you'd be kind enough to lead us in the membership both, and we'll ask all of our members to we'll, we'll follow along and say this along with you. With the gift of God's grace, I vow to embrace the teachings of the Catholic Church, to honor the sanctity of every human life, and to respect the dignity of every person as Christ, with the loving support of my brothers and sisters. So help me God. Oh God. Wonderful. Thank you, Teresa. And Teresa, thank you for sharing your story. Um, I, I hope everyone found that as fascinating as I did. And 
just knowing how, you know, someone's asking us to go to lunch and we don't want to go to lunch and mm -hmm. see what God can make out of that. Isn't that amazing? It is. It's truly amazing. We keep our hearts open to his will and great things happen. So, Teresa, thank you. You're I'd like welcome. to now turn this over to Erica Vincent, our executive director. Uh, we're blessed to have Erica, so blessed to have Erica with us. And Erica is going to talk about some of the graces we received in 2021. So Erica, it's all yours. Thank you, Barry. Hello, everyone. I join you today from our office in Syracuse, New York. Uh, last year was another grace-filled year. We have been blessed to continue with so many of our prayerful programs. Our Lord's Water Ministry was and is busier than ever. We received a shipment of Lord's Water in April last year, um, and we were able to share 30,000 bottles of Lord's Water within the U.S. and Canada. Our Lord's Water Appeal was a huge success, and we are so grateful and thank everyone that donated generously to support keeping the liquid grace of Lord's flowing. We continue to offer um, opportunities each month to prayerfully connect as members. Uh, each program listed here um, offers a unique, a unique way to unite in the grotto of our hearts from wherever we are in the world. Thank you for joining us to lift each other in prayer and to live our charism of love and family. We hope this year everyone will continue to help one another to find hope and comfort and purpose in our suffering through these prayerful opportunities. Last year, we transitioned from online experience, virtual pilgrimage experiences back to in-person events um, in about 12 dioceses. Our guides visited parishes, schools, nursing homes, and private homes once again. There were many, we have many more planned for 2022, and Pam Barton and Charo Rojas will share the details um, of what's to come in 2022 and more of the graces of 2021 um, a little bit later in our meeting. Um, behind the scenes, we have two very special projects developing. The Lord's Catechetical Resource Program uh, is a program funded by a grant from our Sunday visitor and will launch this spring. The long-awaited book, Work on That, continues. We continue to edit and work towards publishing this extraordinary book, sharing about the everyday miracles of Lords experienced by our members. Um, stay tuned for updates on both of these projects. Um, for those of you that receive our weekly emails, um, as soon as we have more information, we'll be sure to share it with you. So while travel has been restricted since 2020, we have moved from pilgrimages to production. Um, we have directed and produced not one, but two wonderful series that have aired on EWTN. The first series, uh, we did talk about this during our last membership meeting, Lord's Lessons, the pandemic series. It premiered in August. Um, it's now available on our website and our YouTube channel if you missed it. Every person can benefit from this series. Um, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. Marlene Watkins, Father Sean Grismer, and Dr. Majel Braden give such beautiful insight into grief and bereavement, especially at a time of ongoing pandemic, all through the lens of Lourdes. Our next series uh, My Lord's Faith Journey premiered four episodes this past December, and we're so excited to have five new episodes um, airing next month. Another must watch. Um, each episode is hosted by Marlene and Father Sean Grismer and features a special guest sharing about how Lord's has brought healing and peace to their life. These truly extraordinary stories will inspire you. Uh, Barry was going to show us some clips and talk more about this awesome series uh, a little bit later also. Our third and final production of 2021 was the Week of Grace and Gratitude. Um, we concluded the year by gathering in prayer to celebrate our blessings and explore our faith deeper. Um, we were so excited and pleased to have special guests Michael John Poirier for Story and Song, 
uh, Father Sean Grismer led us in a reflection on the Immaculate Conception. We were able to pray the Stations of the Cross um, at the end of the week with the Cornell family. And we were also able to journey to Lourdes with online virtual pilgrimages in both English and Spanish. All this was in one week, one event each day. It was so grace-filled. And if you missed it, some of the, the recordings are still also available on our YouTube channel. Um, the last grace of 2021 to discuss today would be our return to Lourdes. Finally, after almost two years, a limited number of us were able to return to Lourdes in the summer and in the fall. Uh, Marlene, Pam Ryan, and Dr. Belen were our first brave leaders to travel back last summer. Our team of two gyms, uh, both Jim Cornell and Jim Barton, followed shortly after to continue the Guadalupe House renovation project and further explore the safety and security that we would need for the planned pilgrimage in the fall. Um, a little side note, for those that are new to us, if we have new members on, um, I did just mention Guadalupe House. Um, we own a home in Lourdes that we have lovingly named Guadalupe House after the patroness of the Americas. Renovations on our home, our American oasis in Lourdes, um, began after many, many years of planning in March of 2019. Um, we worked on the roof, securing the structure, and then work was halted due to the pandemic and shutdowns in France. Um, so this fall, our team was able to reconnect with our architect, inspect and secure the property, and we are now working on updating the construction plans and restarting the construction as soon as possible. Uh, we ask you to please pray for this special project and for our home, our home in France. Um, back to our pilgrimage. Um, so travel restrictions and COVID-19 testing posed so many obstacles for our October pilgrimage but all were overcome by our dedicated team. Um, our brave advance team and our medical volunteers accompanied two very special families to Lourdes. It was a pilgrimage never to be forgotten, the long awaited return. Um, our prudent planning and loving care made for a once in a lifetime pilgrimage for every person involved, the pilgrims, the volunteers, the leaders, and even our office team. Um, Pamela Ryan, Pilgrimage Director, and Deacon Dan Rivetto will now share more about this pilgrimage and our plans for pilgrimage in 2022. Thank you, Erica. It's so great to be with you here in our membership meeting for 2022. We're so excited about making plans, but let's go back to October of 2021. And I'll ask Deacon Dan to share with you his experience in Lord. Thank you, Pam. Yes, it was a wonderful pilgrimage, one that I'll never forget. And I'll always be reminded by it when I read uh, Mark chapter two, when uh, the paralytic is being lowered down through the roof to Jesus by his friends, because that was the kind of heroic effort that our office team and our medical staff and our volunteers uh, came together to bring two very special need pilgrims to Lourdes in October. These uh, special needs pilgrims were, were an inspiration to all of us who had the pleasure of meeting them and their families. Uh, what was unique to both of them, uh, not only because they had such loving families and cared so deeply for them, but because they were on ventilators. So that made it a great challenge. Um, uh, for us to, to transport them uh, from here in the U.S. over to Lourdes. What also made this a, a, a unique challenge was, of course, the pandemic, the pandemic. And all of us who participated in this special needs pilgrimage, really, uh, we needed to test negative for COVID just before we departed from our home cities so that we wouldn't pose a threat to these beautiful pilgrims or each other as we made our travel. That was not a requirement of France, but it was something that Lord's volunteers thought was necessary to ensure the safety and the health of our people. 
So when we made it to Lourdes, it was uh, an extraordinary experience. Truly, a great deal of thanks goes to all of our members who participated in this, from the office team, to our volunteers, and especially the heroic efforts of our medical staff that participated. These volunteers came in such close contact with, with not only these pilgrims, but for others that we met along the way. And um, we did everything. We did everything. We participated in the candlelight rosary procession, in the uh, procession for the Blessed Sacrament and Benediction International Mass. We did the walking tour of the sanctuary and the Footsteps of Bernadette tour throughout, this, throughout the, this, the, the, um, the area of Lourdes itself. We, um, we were able to dine together, but we had to observe very strict protocols and uh, to ensure that we, from the two different uh, departure cities, were as separated as we could be, but together nonetheless as the family that we enjoy as a charism. So in many ways, it was really a, a very, very special pilgrimage. Oh, we thank you so much, Deacon, for your heroic efforts in leading this very special, special needs pilgrimage to Lourdes. We couldn't have done it without you. My heart goes out to all of you as you learn of our plans for this upcoming year. We're very excited to be back in the planning routine because that's what we do. We go to Lourdes and we take you along with us. We're planning to attend the February days. It's coming up pretty soon. And this is a time in Lourdes when all of the pilgrimage directors and presidents of hospitalities, as well as other stakeholders in our travel groups, attend meetings in Lourdes. So we get to see, um, meet again our, our friends that we've had for so long since we haven't been able to go back and we get to meet new people, new friends in Lourdes. So there will be four of us representing North American volunteers, Deacon Dan and myself, as well as Chato and Edwin Rojas, who are board members. So we'll be there attending meetings and making arrangements for our upcoming pilgrimages. So I guess you're really excited to hear about this. And we are planning to have a volunteer pilgrimage in September for our volunteers with Hospitalité Notre Dame de Lourdes, um, our service pilgrimage. And that would be in September. And in October, we are planning our special needs pilgrimage with our pilgrims for sure, our medical team, our advanced team. So I'm sure you're very excited to hear what we have to say but we'll give you the update when we come back from Lords in February uh, with all of the information. We will of course be adhering to the protocols that we find in France for the COVID epidemic, um, as well as the Omicron version. And um, we'll share whatever we find there. The information will be, um, good for us, new to us, um, anything that is has changed and anything that we would like you to know about Lourdes. But it's so exciting to be going. We're really so glad and we're glad that we'll be able to take you with us um, this year in 2022. So we're looking forward to sharing with you um, that information when we come back. So God bless you all. Thank you so much, Pam and Deacon. Uh, we wish you safe travels next month. Um, let me add a few things here. One would be um, that they'll be departing the beginning of February. So if anyone has prayer petitions that you would like to be hand carried to the grotto, you can send those to our office or submit them online. And Pam and Dan can hand carry those to the Lord's Grotto for the feast day on February 11th, where they'll be present praying for us. Um, also, the information and applications for the fall 2022 pilgrimages will be available on our website in the coming weeks. We will notify everyone by email when we are ready to begin accepting those applications. 
Um, we'll be monitoring travel restrictions and vac vaccination requirements closely, and we'll do our very best to keep everyone informed. Um, and we pray that these pilgrimages are possible this fall. Uh, Pam Barton, our Lord's Virtual Pilgrimage Experience Director, and Charo Rojas, our Spanish-speaking guide, are up on deck next. Um, they're going to share with you about the graces of virtual pilgrimage and our plans for 2022. Well, thank you so much, Erica. Um, as you mentioned, uh, we were very blessed in the second half of 2021 to slowly return to sharing in-person virtual pilgrimages and parishes and schools. And, and it was just a delight to actually uh, be with each other as, as one person uh, meets another, just like Our Lady and Bernadette. It was, it was really so wonderful after being separated for so long. And we're really excited that this year we already have close to 30 virtual pilgrimages scheduled uh, through the end of February. And our very first virtual pilgrimage of the year will be tomorrow at St. Joseph's Parish in Camillus, New York, the home of our spiritual director, Father Hyde, and in the home of our, our home diocese of Syracuse, New York, on the feast day of our hometown saint, St. Mary Ann Cope. So really a day of, of grace and gratitude again as we begin uh, in-person virtual pilgrimages. And it will also be guided by our newest virtual pilgrimage guide team. So we are really uh, ramping up and preparing to share this uh, grace as, as often as we can. Um, and while we are still, uh, you know, planning on sharing in person a lot, we're still blessed to have the extraordinary plenary indulgence for sharing virtual pilgrimage through broadcast and online means. So once again, EWTN will share our virtual pilgrimage on global TV, guided by our foundress Marlene Watkins on the feast day to millions of viewers. And individually, our guides are also able to share virtual pilgrimage through Zoom with pilgrims in places where we are unable to go. And one team that is doing that very far and wide is Edwin and Chara Rojas, who've shared our virtual pilgrimage in Spanish throughout Central and South America. So Charo, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Hello, dear Lourdes family. As Sam said, we are very happy to bring the message of Lourdes in person to all parishes again. We serve with love to honor our Lord Jesus and our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Lourdes, the Immaculate Conception. Our guides, present the Lord's virtual pilgrimage experience in English and in Spanish, not only in person, but also virtually by Zoom. With this platform, we can do the presentation for 320 or 300 participants. If you know someone who would like to receive the message of Lourdes, please contact our office in Syracuse. Estamos felices de llevar nuevamente el mensaje de Lourdes a todas las parroquias en persona. Nuestros guías hacen la presentación en inglés y en español y también virtualmente por Zoom. En esta plataforma podemos reunir a 3, 20 o 300 personas. Durante la presentación pueden tocar la roca original de la gruta, recibir agua de Lourdes, la bendición eucarística, la indulgencia plenaria y rezar el Santo Rosario en procesión de velas. Si desean recibir el mensaje de Lourdes, por favor, llamen a nuestra oficina en Syracuse. Dios los bendiga. Thank you, Charo. It's always so wonderful for us to hear that invitation in our, our own language, our, our native language. So thank you for sharing that with so many. You know, one often unknown fact is that we regularly share virtual pilgrimage outside North America and what we call our Out Into the Deep Ministry. And we think of it as our annual tithe to the Lord. Um, we've shared with pilgrims um, as far as away as Africa, South America, China. And this past year, the Philippines celebrated 500 years of Christianity, and we were able to ship them Lord's water for our COVID out in the deep this year. Uh, we're just so very blessed to share the grace of Lord's with so many. It's a grace and a privilege. So thank you very much for that. And back to you, Barry. Thank you so much, Pam and Charo, uh, for that beautiful summary and for all that you do to spread the message of Our Lady and of our apostolate and of Lourdes uh, through virtual pilgrimages. And also thanks to Deacon and Pam, Pam Ryan, for uh, all you do uh, for our pilgrimages. 
So um, we're, we're still kind of giving you a recap of, of 2021 and talking about some of the things we're doing in 2021 and also 2022. And another exciting initiative uh, that uh, has been underway, and it sort of started uh, because of COVID. Um, you know, when you think about a ministry like ours, our main uh, parts of our ministry uh, are bringing sick and volunteers to Lourdes and also visiting people in person with in-person uh, virtual pilgrimages. And then you, you say, okay, what happens in a pandemic where you can't travel either internationally or nationally, or you can't see people in person? One might think, gosh, how can you possibly survive that? Well, you, with the Lord and with faith, you can survive all things and not only survive, but thrive. And so one of the things that happened is we really had more of a focus on communications and on electronic communications and on um, reaching out using um, non-traditional means um, and technology to extend the invitation and, and fulfill our mission. And one of the ways we did that was through um, creating uh, programming for EWTN and other, other television outlets uh, where we could uh, communicate with people some of the beautiful aspects of this ministry. So uh, we had our first series on EWTN in July, in August actually, and it was called um, I, it was called Lord's Lessons, and uh, there was five episodes, and it really dealt with uh, how to um, spiritually uh, handle, if you will, or how to handle some of the effects, negative effects of the pandemic, and there are many. And it was uh, on EWTN. It was a beautiful series, and uh, that aired. And then we had another series that really is less to do with the pandemic and really more in line with the heart of our ministry. And that series is called My Lord's Faith Journey. So it shares, so what we've seen as an apostolate, you know, from those humble beginnings of have, having a business card plucked from a fishbowl, we see that the grace of our Lord and the grace of Our Lady, the advocacy of Our Lady, the simplicity of St. Bernadette has touched people in so many ways. Uh, both collectively, but also individually. And I think that's where evangelism really happens is on the individual level. And so um, Marlene, our foundress, and uh, Dr. Majel Braden, uh, one of our board members and another huge friend of, of Lourdes Volunteers, um, you know, talked about producing this series of um, sharing the of testimonies, if you will, where individual pilgrims or volunteers or basically people that are, are involved with Lord's volunteers share their story, their, share their testimony of, of how they came to Lord's, how they came to the faith. And so that series is called My Lord's Faith Journey. And in uh, December of 2021, our first four episodes aired and they were well received, beautiful, beautiful episodes. Uh, EWTN loved them, was proud to air them. Uh, we were very grateful for our partnership with EWTN. Um, but Lord's Volunteers produced those. Ver Lord's Volunteers conceived of them, wrote them, filmed them, did the post-production, basically did everything and continues to, uh, to do that. And again, EWTN is kind enough to air them. So their partnership is important. But, you know, it's something to be proud of as a member is that this humble little apostolate has somehow learned how to become a, a film production company. Who would have thought, right? So one of those episodes, um, they're all fantastic. Uh, one of them, we have some excerpts uh, with us because we're not sure if you all got a chance to view every episode. Um, they're just really special. Um, so we have a film clip uh, that we're going to show you uh, from the episode of nurse, we call her head nurse, Lindsay Mooney. And Lindsay is here with us today, uh, which we're very glad uh, that she is. So we're going to talk to Lindsay a little bit about filming of that, some of the circumstances that occurred prior to the filming. And first, I'd like uh, to go ahead and have you view um, a short segment, about four minutes from that, th that from that 30 minute episode of My Lord's Faith Journey featuring Lindsay Mooney. So we'll go ahead and- Before I had had my first pilgrimage with Lord's volunteers, you know, I had been lapsed from the church for roughly 10 years. Um, I always knew that Jesus loved me and I loved him. I, you know, I, I always felt that I, I was a Christian. I never became an atheist or gave up my, my faith or anything like that. And so I, I went online and I just Googled um, Christian nurse missions. Um, 
and I happened to come upon North American Lords Volunteer site. Now, at the time, I thought it was too Marian. <laughs> but I said, you know, I'll give it a chance. I believe it was before going into the baths that I went back to confession with one of the Franciscan friars that was there. After that, you know, I went to, into the baths. I just found a lot of, I found, you know, peace and hope there. And definitely hope to, to bring what I found there in Lourdes forward, not only in my professional career, but also just in life. That was the pilgrimage, I think, that I definitely finally understood what redemp redemptive suffering meant. Um, I, as a child, you know, especially if you grow up as a cradle Catholic, a lot of times you might hear grandma say, offer it up, offer it up. But like, what does that really mean? And I remember bringing uh, my pilgrim on the ventilator and her husband to the reconciliation chapel in Lourdes, and I didn't think he was going to go in. So then I see her husband go in, and she finished with confession, and she, she, her and I were waiting outside, and she said, you know, you don't know how long that I've prayed for this. Like, I've offered up my sufferings for this. I've prayed for this for so long. She said, to me, coming all the way here, this is the miracle of Lourdes, is that not that I get physically healed, but that my husband's soul gets saved. Well, I've personally witnessed both physical and emotional spiritual healings, but to me the greatest healing is of someone's soul because even if they get physically healed of anything, whether it's a, a fractured ankle to metastatic cancer, that only lasts for this life. This body only lasts for this life, but our soul is for eternity. So when someone to me like, goes into the baths or has a deep experience in, in the sacrament of penance, to me, that's, that, that's the whole message of Lord's is penance, conversion. And it was preparing you for what none of us suspected, which is a worldwide pandemic. Yes. And of course, the front row seat to this tragic drama that, you know, devastating medically our, our, our nurses. So, you know, where I was working, before I knew it, you know, every single patient in the place was positive mm -hmm. for COVID-19. Uh, I ended up um, contracting COVID-19 myself, which I was home from work for more than a month. And that was a suffering in and of itself. Um, you know, physically, I, I got to enter into what the patients experienced, I really did. Because, you know, I was alone at home not many people are going to offer to come see you when you're positive of COVID and the entire world is frightened of it, you know? <laughs> um, and just, just the physical pains of COVID, you know, just like your skin hurts. I had no energy to pray all the prayers that we know and love as Catholics, like the Divine Mercy Chaplet, the Rosary, um, prayers that we've committed to, me to memory. So I, I think the prayer for me became offering up myself for the redemption of the souls of the, the patients that had died, for uh, Lord's volunteers, for my family and friends that needed it the most. That became the prayer. The more we unite our sufferings to Jesus, the more like him we become. That is so powerful, Lindsay. And, um... So Lindsay is joining us, um, now an international film star. <laughs> I think EW, EW10 has like 350 million viewers, but you don't think about that before you film, right? You, so, Not uh, at all. No, we are so grateful. That is such powerful testimony. And you've become such an incredible part of our, our ministry and our Lord's family, Lindsay. Um, but you know, there's, there's a part of this that uh, I don't think a lot of people are aware of. There was something that happened to you prior to that filming. Now, on the film, everything looks perfect, no problem. And it was, again, touched, I'm sure, many, many souls. But uh, it'd be great to have you share with our members what actually happened prior to that filming. Right. So uh, at the place where I was working as a registered nurse, um, the week before the filming, actually, I had already taken the time off. Uh, Marlene had notified me that I was going to be traveling to film. 
um, and to give my testimony about working during COVID and so forth. And um, the week before I was actually assaulted by a mentally ill patient um, who actually knocked me unconscious. So I ended up in the hospital, ended up with a traumatic brain injury. And I was not sure if I was going to be able to travel or not. Um, did some consulting with my doctor and, you know, she said that it was going to be safe for me to, to travel. Um, but, you know, just a week after such a traumatic event, you know, I really was unsure of, did I want to go on TV? Could, you know, was this going to be possible mentally, emotionally to share this whole story again, given what had just happened to me, uh, you know, being assaulted and knocked unconscious and I didn't know what the road forward was going forward with the traumatic brain injury that I had uh, on video. Like you said, you, you don't notice anything. No. Um, so I think that, you know, through the encouragement of a lot of uh, different North American Lords volunteers members, especially the medical team, they really encouraged me to still go forward with the, the filming um, if it was medically safe to do so, because, you know, I think that it just is is going to give and has given a lot of hope to so many people, especially during this, this uh, wave of the pandemic that's upon us now. But also that to just show that a lot, when you're going to do something for Jesus, a lot of times, you know, there is going to be a spiritual battle. And I was talking to a priest about the assault that had happened to me before the filming. And, you know, like he said, there's, there's a resurrection to stuff that happens to us that there's no evil that god cannot bring a greater good from and that the resurrection of the suffering that we're going through does not necessarily just happen in the life to come but there's a resurrection to it now and the showing of this and the the uh impact that it's going to have on other people i think is the resurrection to you know what had happened to me with the assault before the filming it's really extraordinary, Lindsay, and you know you're you're such a beautiful person, and you embody really um, all of our volunteers, but especially our medical team. You know that uh, he has such big hearts, and and will fly in the face of almost any obstacle. It seems like, you know, mm -hmm. to to do our Lord's will, and so it's it's a powerful powerful testimony. For those of our members that haven't seen the entire program, I would strongly urge you to watch that. It's available on our YouTube channel, and there's uh, three other episodes. So it's a total of four episodes. I think yours, did your air, air first, Lindsay? I think it might have been the first to air um, back in December. It, it was one of the first ones, yes. One of the first ones, yeah. So um, any other th thoughts that you'd like to share with our members? I, we appreciate you taking the time. We just happen to hit it because you work a lot of hours. We just happened to be lucky, <laughs> lucky and hit it so you could join us today. We're, we're so, so happy. And yes, I was, I was, I was glad to join, especially with my schedule. Like you said, I'm rotating days and nights at the hospital. So yeah. um, I think that, you know, at first, you know, sharing something so personal, intimate on EWTN, it is a little bit scary because, you know, it's an international network and um, I've always been a big, big, huge fan of Mother Angelica. I consider her one of my spiritual mothers. So I know what a wide impact the network has through radio and TV, but I just think taking the courage to, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to move and to go out into the deep and take that, that next step to share your testimony and realizing what God can do through just you sharing your small, simple story of what he's done in your life. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And a great example for all of us. And, you know, it was, it was great because our theme last year was sh sharing our story. And boy, yes. did you ever did you ever do that? <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank for you that. for allowing me to do so. Oh yeah, it's our our pleasure, our pleasure, Nurse Lindsay. So, that was in May, right? That we filmed that uh, with you. That was in May of last year. Yes, that, May of 2021. May of 2021. So that that would give our our members an idea of how long it takes. You know, the post production work, which again we knew nothing about before, but we're starting to learn a lot more about it and then scheduling it to appear on EWTN. And um, for those that have seen the four episodes, um, I'd also like we to let people know that coming this February, we have five new episodes. So based on the success of what you and the other uh, guests did in May, we filmed another, ser another series of testimonies in September in the same place, down in San Antonio, beautiful place uh, that uh, again, Dr. Majel had arranged for us. 
so we'd like to show excerpts. We've got uh, five new episodes coming up starting uh, February 7th is the first one. And uh, one of our, our very close family members, Jamie Jensen, uh, flew to San Antonio in September and uh, recorded his testimony. We've got a short two minute clip I'd like to show of, of that programming, which will be aired on EWTN February 7th. I've been the Lord's 17 times. 17 times. Yes. And we've learned a lot yes. in those 17 travels that yeah, you yes. courageously made. And you're one of what we call the Rough Riders. That means you go out of a city for the first time so we can teach in that airport yes. and on those flight crews about transferring with motorized wheelchairs and manual wheelchairs. So Jamie's a rough rider and he gets to go out. I and love that term. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that about you, Jamie. <laughs> it's tr it's tr it truly is that. Yeah. It is. Because it is, it's rough. When the, you know, there's a lot of times when the crews are, or the airport personnel don't really have a lot of people in Jamie's um, situation with his chairs that is traveling internationally because we're going back many years. Um, it, I think domestically in the U.S., we probably were becoming more handicap accessible sensibilities, yes. but I don't think they anticipated Jamie coming 17 times. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't anticipate it. <laughs> uh, my first trip was in 2006. And as we all say, we get caught. Excuse me, get caught in the Marion vortex. <laughs> in 2006, I was introduced by way of many different ways to Lord Volunteers, and it, like I said previously, it just snowed snowballed after that. So Jamie returns to the sacraments in the church of his childhood, coming to Lourdes, um, has a great deepening of his faith. Um, the people who know and love Jamie now can't believe he used to be angry and bitter, but no. um, it was... <laughs> I it, can't believe it myself. <laughs> it's like you go and get your tank filled. Yes. He goes every year, and some people say, well, if you go just once, well, it's a grace to go just once. Yes. But for Jamie, it's every year he goes and renews that, and of course, so many of us learn so much um, and get a grace through that process. The, the nurses and the caregivers who, um, you know, come and, and make the pilgrimage possible for Jamie and Jamie bringing them to the grotto, yeah. actually. Yes. We always thought that we were bringing the sick to Lourdes and, yeah. and we looked around and through Jamie began to realize maybe Jamie's well, bringing us to the grotto. Yes. Maybe we're not bringing Jamie. To the I would only say me. I would say every pilgrim. Beautiful, beautiful. Jamie, I know you're out there, buddy. Thank you so much for uh, for having the courage to do everything you've done, 17 times to Lourdes and then making the trip down to San Antonio to film uh, what is a beautiful segment. It will be our first segment aired the week of the feast day this year, again, on, on February 7th. So don't miss that episode. There's um, there's There's a lot of great, great information in there. The testimony is extremely strong, extremely powerful. Uh, but there's one funny moment in that uh, in that episode. I'm not going to share what it is now, but I will tell you that um, and when we reviewed the episode and we're doing our editing, uh, Marlene and, and Father and everyone else in the room laughed so hard it pegged all of our meters. So um, you'll, you'll know when you watch the episode, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's really special, as are the other. The other episodes that were filmed are truly, truly special. So uh, we'd ask you to put that on your calendar uh, and don't miss it. So, and again, thank you. Thank you, Nurse Lindsay, for uh, for being with us for this segment. We, we really, really appreciate everything you do. So I'd just like to, uh, before we I turn it over to Teresa to talk a little bit about uh, the spiritual side of what we do, which of course is our foundation. Uh, I'd just like to say that the programming that you saw and all of the many, many initiatives that we talked about for 2021 would not be possible without your financial support. So thank you so much for that. You, our members, allow us to do what we do. Um, we allow us to keep our wonderful staff in our office. that are so central and core to what we do. And so um, we thank you for that. Our Stars of Mary, uh, who are our monthly supporters, we even have a few people, believe it or not, that contribute on a weekly basis, which is incredible. 
So, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for everything you do. Uh, you, you allow us to do what we do here. And so I'd like to ask uh, Teresa, our vice president, uh, to talk about our foundation. So as important as the financial side is, and it's very important, there's something more important. And that is our prayer uh, and our spiritual uh, uh, foundation of, of what everyone does to make this ministry possible. So Teresa, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Barry. So how do we get involved spiritually? Um, for those of you new to us, we always look to St. Bernadette as our example in how to live our mission in our charism, whatever our circumstances may be. You may be experiencing a time of difficulty as Bernadette during her time living in the cash show. Drawing on the support of her family, they would pick up their rosaries and unite in prayer with one another and for one another. We invite you to join us for our Lord's Volunteers Family Rosary the second Saturday of each month at 12 noon Eastern for our Lord's Family Rosary. During her stay in Bartrez, Bernadette had a great desire to receive Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist and to draw closer to him. And Bernadette teaches us that we can unite spiritually in Holy Communion at Mass and before the Most Blessed Sacrament in prayer. Know that as members, your intentions are prayed for at our membership Masses each month, as well as Masses in the Grotto when in Lourdes. Perhaps you're longing for Lourdes. We invite you to spend time in the Grotto as Bernadette under the gaze of Our Lady. Our Grotto gatherings starting in March, the 11th of each month at 7 p.m. Eastern. This is a time of prayer, adoration, and fellowship. Or maybe you are in your own Nevere, unable to do all that you could prior to the pandemic. After the apparitions, Bernadette's mission did not end. There was still a great work to be done, and she quietly offered her prayers and penance to bring Christ to those before her. We invite you to join our Bernadette Brigade as we pray for the internal operations of our apostolate and more. Your prayers and sacrifice sustain us in all that we do, and we thank you. But we know that God is never outdone in generosity. He gives us so much more than we could ever give. As members, you also receive graces, in addition to the graces from our membership masses offered for you. You receive a partial indulgence for every act of mercy, charity, evangelization, penance, or suffering, personal suffering. For each of us, this is something different. Whoever is before us, we serve Christ in that person before us. Also, for making pilgrimage to Lourdes, you have the opportunity for a plenary indulgence, but also you can receive this indulgence by participation in a Lourdes virtual pilgrimage experience. And we invite you to attend or host a Lourdes virtual pilgrimage. The message of Lourdes is for all of us, and it's meant to be shared. We thank our dear friend, Lindsay, for sharing the extraordinary grace of Lourdes in her life today and for the experience of holy pilgrimage. Share the grace of Lourdes with people in your life. There is something each one of us can do here. And it was once said of a pilgrim who returned from Lourdes that a light dimmed by suffering has returned to illuminate the entire, illuminate the entire church. You do not know what sharing your Lord's story may ignite in someone who is away from God. So stay connected, make sure you're registered as a member to receive those graces. And now I turn you back to Barry, our president for closing remarks. Thank you so much, Teresa. Thank you, that was beautiful. And thank you for all you do uh, on, on, uh, for our ministry and especially uh, for our prayer and our spiritual life. We, we are so grateful. So um, as far as uh, closing remarks, there's a few things we'd just like to leave you with that we'd like you to mark on your calendar. Um, we take a look at this slide. So we've been talking about the events during the feast day this year. Uh, that would be between February 7th and February 11th. So we have our premiere broadcast of our five new episodes of My Lord's Faith Journey. Uh, that'll be at 5.30 Eastern time on EWTN. So, you know, set your, your DVRs if you can't be there to watch them in person. The episodes are truly extraordinary, as were the first four, and uh, you're not going to want to miss those. 
Um, on the feast day, uh, the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes and also World Day of the Sick, uh, we will have a Lourdes virtual pilgrimage experience on EWTN starting at 4.30. It's an hour-long program. And also uh, there will be um, Lourdes virtual pilgrimages being uh, being offered live in parishes in the states of New York, Florida, and Michigan. Uh, our website will have more uh, info, information on in-person vir virtual pilgrimage dates. Uh, coming in April, um, we have a surprise visitor uh, visiting the United States. Um, I'm going to I can't, I'm not going to make an official announcement, but it'll be an unofficial announcement for, for our members. I want you guys to know about this. So um, this was a vision of our founders, Marlene, um, a couple of years, maybe even more ago, where she felt that um, it would be wonderful to have the relics of St. Bernadette visit the United States. So this was Marlene's vision. She spoke with, she's been speaking with the sanctuary about this. And lo and behold, this year, uh, that is going to come to pass. Right now, uh, we have a small committee. Uh, we're working with um, the sanctuary and with some other apostolates to plan the relics coming to the United States. Uh, more information will follow, but a high level uh, update or tip for our members is that St. Bernadette should be here uh, roughly between April 1st and June 30th. Those dates could vary a little bit, but that's in general, uh, what we're planning, uh, the, the sanctuary would like the relics of St. Bernadette back in Lourdes in the summertime because a lot of people um, are there at that time and venerate the relics. And then following the summertime, they're scheduled to visit the United Kingdom in September. So what a blessing, right? What a grace. And really, um, that brings us to uh, the final bullet on this slide, and that is a year of grace and gratitude. You know, we, we had our week of grace and gratitude back in December where we had all those wonderful events, uh, the premiere of My Lord's Faith Journey on EWTN. You know, we had our virtual pilgrimages. We had the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. There were so many great things that happened during that week. We decided that the fitting theme for our 20th anniversary, right? So uh, July 16th will be the 20th anniversary of Lourdes Volunteers. So it was over 20 years ago that where we started this meeting, Teresa Steiner picked, had her business card picked out of that fishbowl. And we've seen the incredible graces that have poured out since through Marlene, our foundress, and through all of us, and of course, through Our Lady and uh, with, with the help of St. Bernadette. So July 16th, we begin our week of grace and gratitude, celebrating this 20 years. Um, we will um, have more information to follow on that. Uh, we will have actually, I believe, another five episodes of My Lord's Faith Journey uh, that will occur then. We'll have our next membership meeting. Uh, that's our target is to have it on that date. Um, there's a lot being planned for that time. So um, our theme is Year of Grace and Gratitude. And certainly we are grateful uh, to you, our members, for all that you do. And so thank you for joining us today. Um, and to close us off, I'd like to... Uh, ask our, our spiritual director, Father Robert Hyde, who is with us, uh, to close us in prayer. Thank you and God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's pray together the pilgrim promise of joy. Oh God, Thank you for calling me on the spiritual journey to know you more fully. I promise to embrace with joy all that you present to me on this earthly pilgrimage. Bless me to be patient and compassionate and loving as I meet you and others. Oh God, please give me the grace to welcome the unexpected, to see your blessing in every moment, and to be awed by holiness wherever encountered. Please renew me to return home refreshed and transformed in you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. St. Bernadette, pray for us. Pray for us. Thank you so much, Father. And we'll ask our panelists to all come on camera. Bye, everybody. God bless you. Our Lady of Lords, pray with us now as we begin one more year in honor of your.
Son, His grace, His power to heal. Our Lady of Lords, pray with us, sing with us, help us learn to pray through adversity. Help us learn to trust through the years. Our Lady of the Lords, will you lead us in a song?